What's up, everybody? Travis Gafford here in my bunker, talking to Licorice in the Cloud9 bunker with coverage brought to you by Alienware at the fake LCS parking lot that I've constructed digitally. Uh, so, Licorice, tell me about how this past week has been for you just dealing with all these things. The last week has been pretty good, actually. I think that for us, there's just so much less stress involved with making sure we have like a fantastic setup and everything because the regular season games don't actually matter for us because we're already locked in for first place. It's really just, if we have to play playoffs, we want to get it hammered down within the next two weeks, but there really wasn't like a like a mad scramble or anything. It was like, okay, we're just gonna set things up. And then if we need to change things after like week eight, going into week nine, we will. And after week nine, if we need to change more things, we will. So honestly, it felt pretty good. Well, and one of the unique things about Cloud9 is that unlike the other teams, you guys were still doing the team house situation. I assume that's where you are right now. Yeah. So how do you feel like that gives you guys any kind of advantage? Because other teams are scrambling to figure out like maybe they're scrimming at home sometimes. Maybe they are uh, still playing in the office or whatever. You guys don't and maybe they now have to figure out how to play from each of their homes. You guys basically nothing has changed for you, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, personally, my personal feelings on it are actually that teams that have facilities actually have a slight advantage during the regular season over the gaming house because I think it's actually just a better setup and one that we're probably trying to move to eventually but I mean I'm not too sure about that I just play the game but as a player it's really like the focus is just the exact same practice hard be the best you can be show up for matches and do well and I think thinking about it just isn't really relevant for me yeah is it is it especially knowing that the regular season matches don't matter as much to you obviously you guys were able to beat 100 thieves just now but is it make it difficult to consider this something other than like a scrim, right? Because you're you're playing a match that kind of doesn't matter. You're now playing it from your facility or from your office or you know where your home, I guess. It's got to feel very tempting to just fall into that scrim mindset. I think it is a danger of playing from the house, but I think that it's something that can be managed. And also, I think that playing a scrim feels different because there's not a hundred thousand people watching your scrim or like i don't know the exact numbers but probably around that number or more and we don't normally have that kind of audience for scrims so it, it already feels different just based on that okay so you guys were able to kind of get into the lcs mindset even if you weren't like on stage with the audience in front of you yeah i mean for me personally i did like the same pre-game routine i always do i was able to just like shorten it a bit because like our schedule is a bit shortened without the the travel times to and from the LCS and I don't know I felt pretty good today yeah take me through that match against 100 Thieves it did seem a little close at times at least maybe perhaps closer and it, it you know perhaps some people are starting to think hey some of these teams are catching up to Cloud9 I think that when we play our style that we've like been playing since week one and we're not trying new things we are a lot better than every other team out there I think that today we were kind of trying something new and it wasn't super polished because it doesn't really have to be for us and it's just we were playing into scrims we're gonna play it on stage and see how it goes and i think that it wasn't perfect but i think that it was like it wasn't terrible either so there's things to work on and i think that we can make it a lot better next time well can you break down your strategy for today all uh, right i mean the strategy today with Callista top is basically just a, like a win lane win game strategy like we had a winning top lane with Callista, we had a winning bot lane with like a weird kind of syndra matchup that we haven't played before. And then mid lane, we have Gregus Yasuo, which is kind of known to be like an aggressive 2v2 pick. So we're basically just trying to fight them and win our lanes and win the game that way. Yeah, I there's been a lot of, uh, I think the Cloud9 twi Twitter account tweeted like, what game play or what champions do you want us to play? You know, let us know or whatever. <laughs> I, obviously today you've tried something unconventional. How much of that is, let's just have fun versus let's be like G2 would just do weird shit and win because it also kind of works. I think our focus is actually just to make sh to like practice things that we think are good. Like, I don't think it's like trolly or for fun or anything like that. I think like I legitimately think Callista top is a good pick and I want to try it and I still think it's a good pick and I think it's something that we can play and when we have these kind of like off meta picks that we can pull out because we practice it in scrims and on stage now going into playoffs it gives us a huge advantage over the other teams yeah well setting aside the game today 
I know that you guys are already at the team house. So are there ways in which you guys have been affected by this or has this hit the team at all? I think it's affecting everyone at least a little bit. Um, I mean, players aren't going out nearly as much as they were before. Everyone is kind of quarantined apart from contact with like your teammates, obviously. And uh, our chef actually just left. Yesterday was her last day um, for now just because she was really worried about the, the coronavirus as well. So we're trying to figure out like the food situation. So I wouldn't say it's been like smooth sailing, but nothing terrible has happened yet either. Yeah. Are there less people at the house right now? Cause I know in the past, like a lot of folks have come through or, you know, you guys have always had a lot of people in and out. Yeah. I mean, it's a question more for Jack than me, I think, but in the like video interview I did with him and Monty, we talked about it a bit and Jack, I think like, four weeks ago now sent like all non-essential personnel home and told them to like work from home and like don't come into the office if you're not like a manager coach player yeah or jack <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it's very limited folks at the house then yeah for sure well i wanted to ask you something a little more personal i know you're a canadian citizen uh, obviously you can go back but there's an interesting thing where the border is closing and even uh, you know, the Canadian government saying like, Hey, if you are traveling as a Canadian, come back home. Do you see this stuff? Does it affect you? Do you, do you want to go back to Canada? I don't think I really, I, I, I don't have like a need to go back home. Um, I mean, I hear about it. I talk to my family, like my parents, um, and like, I know, I know how it's affecting them and like, I'm pretty, pretty aware of how the situation is over there, but. I wouldn't say that it really has that much of an effect on me. Yeah. You know, I was just curious because, I mean, obviously, like, there's a lot of international players in the LCS. And so it's always, as I, I had this kind of realization recently about, you know, some of these players might, you know, if I was living abroad, I might be like, I want to go home. But I know for a lot of the LCS pros, they kind of consider LA their home already. So the idea of going back and maybe living with their parents or something is somewhat unappealing. I don't know. But. I just figured I'd ask you. Um, well, other than that, anything you want to say to any of the fans out there, especially now that things look so smooth sailing for you for the next couple of weeks? I think my message to the fans is just, like, we're working hard, we're practicing hard. Thanks for cheering us on. I know the like LCS broadcast Hello, isn't Welcome ideal, but I think we're still having a lot of fun playing the games. And the across from me is Isaac yeah, like cheer us on. Yeah. We're doing our best. LCS well, thank you so much, Lickers, for the interview and taking time to do this. I, I know that uh, among all the different teams, like everybody's been figuring stuff out. So the fact that people are doing remote interviews, I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Travis. Yeah. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching that video. You know, we're at home right now. We're all at home. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you to my sponsors for sticking through with me as we are in a very different type of esports, an older version of esports than, than right now. One of the sponsors is Movement, who makes a bunch of cool stuff, watches, glasses, all kinds of accessories uh, for men and women. Uh, they've been with me for quite some time now. And I love it if you guys could help me out by just going and clicking the link in the description. That actually does help out a lot. Uh, you know, trying to make sure that we're still able to provide a lot of value to our sponsors as we shift to this online working from home version of LCS. So either way, thank you so much to Movement. You can check them in the link description and the link in the video description below. And there's a way to save some money if you do that. Also, shout out to Alienware for supporting everything that I do. Uh, thank you so much to our sponsors.